Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. He shall give his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to turn in our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Amen. Hallelujah. You may have heard the account of a... Uh, it was about a circus elephant that died in a fire in the circus. And uh, as the story went, this, this elephant was full grown and it was tethered uh, in a stake on the ground with a very light rope that could it could easily have broken with just a slight tug. I mean, you know, elephants are powerful. Uh, you know, they're, they're uh, one of the strongest land animals and actually the largest land animal on the earth but the reason in the story the way it went is the reason it didn't break free was that since it was a baby it had been tied with a heavy chain and it learned that it couldn't break that chain so it, it wouldn't do it, it wouldn't try uh, and so it was trained to think that it couldn't break loose even though it could have it had the power to do it but it didn't. And so part of the reason is that it did not know the actual power that it possessed. Amen. And I want you to know sometimes we can be like that. And I want to I want to speak to you tonight about power that is beyond our power. See, our enemy, the devil, is always against us. He's raging against us. Amen. He is always trying to bring us into bondage and tonight I want to help you to see the power that you possess as a child of God. Amen. And so we're going to read one verse of scripture, Ephesians 6, 10. I want to preach a message I've entitled, The Power of His Might. Amen. Ephesians 6, 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, bring revelation to our hearts, understanding, Lord. Help us, God, to see and to, to realize, God, that uh, no matter what Satan throws against us, uh, that we stand not in our own power, but in the power of your might. I pray, God, that you would help us to understand, bring revelation to every heart, bring deliverance and victory in our spirits. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. So, first of all, he says, be strong in the Lord, and you know that was that was he's writing to uh, to uh, you know this church, the you know, Ephesian church, and uh, you know this is a, a, a group of people that he cared for, he loved, and he wanted to see them make it. Amen. And I want you to know that that's true for all of us. God wants to see us make it. Amen. He wants us us to have the victory over the enemy and so as he wrote this it was kind of in the sense of a challenge to realize you're in a fight you know if you read the this he he, he talks about putting on the whole armor of god so that you can stand against the wiles of the devil amen and so that's what he's talking about he's talking about fighting against the enemy and so i, I want to just look at this verse for a moment and just point out some things this word strong, be strong in the Lord, yeah, that's a very, very strong word. <laughs> strong is strong. And and so, but what it means literally, <coughs> excuse me, is to infuse with an excessive dose of inner strength. Amen. Uh, and this was, you know, to be strong in the Lord. Uh, the the imagery here is is like kind of like what would happen to the strong man in the Bible by the name of Samson. How many read about Samson? You know, he was filled with the Spirit of God. He was called to be a deliverer for Israel, and and uh, a, a few different times in his story, 
it says this, it, you can read his story in Judges 13 through 16, and it tells us of a time uh, that, uh, uh, that he was surprised by a, a young lion that came roaring uh, upon him, against him, and in verse 6 of chapter 14 it says, And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he tore the lion apart as one would have torn apart a young goat. As though he had nothing is uh, though he had nothing in his hand, but he did not tell his father or mother what he had done. So this lion, a young lion, in his prime, in his strength, uh, uh, comes and he roars against Samson, and it says the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he was he was endowed with superhuman strength. Amen. Amen. This was this was supernatural. This, this thing that Samson did. And so then a little bit later, uh, it says, it says uh, that, you know, he was, he got married and, and, uh, and uh, you know, he, he had uh, uh, made a bet with some men and, and uh, that if they could guess his riddle, that they would, he would give them each a change of clothes and, you know, they cheated and got, you know, got the answer from his bride. And so in verse 19, it says, in the same chapter of 14, it says, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily, and he went down to Ashkelon and killed 30 of their men and took their apparel and gave the changes of clothing to those who explained the riddle. And so, so you know, it says again, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, one against 30, and he, he wiped them all out. And then even uh, again later on in chapter 15, uh, it says that... Uh, that uh, uh, his own people turned him over to the Philistines who wanted to take revenge on him because he had he had caught 300 foxes and tied their tails together and burned all their crops. He put torches on their tails and, and they ran uh, afraid of the fire and they burned all these crops. So they were, they were very angry at Samson and they came looking for him and his own people turned him over. And it says that... Uh, in, in verse uh, 13 and 14 says and they bound him with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock when he came to Lehi the Philistines came shouting against him then the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and the ropes that were on his arms became like flax that is burned with fire and his bonds broke loose from his hands and then it says he took the jawbone of a donkey and with that jawbone he killed a thousand Philistine soldiers. I'd say that's superhuman, wouldn't you? Amen. And so the scripture says, be strong in the Lord. And that word strong is very much like the word, uh, like it's a description of what happened when Samson was, was supernaturally endowed with power. In Greek mythology, this the word that's used here is a Greek word, and that word is is used to describe some of the heroes of of uh, uh, mythology. One of those was a man by the name of Hercules. How many have heard of Hercules? I think Disney just made a movie. Uh, I don't know if it's a cartoon or what. Hercules, but in the in the Greek mythology, Hercules was was uh, his father was Zeus, and and he was half human and half half of the gods and uh, his uh, stepmother hated him and she she was you know always trying to kill him she sent two serpents to kill him when he was an infant but uh, you know they were going to wrap him up and and squeeze him to death but he choked them instead and you know and so the word for hercules strength was the same word that we're seeing here and it's the word from where we get the word uh, dynamite it's dunamis it's the same word that Jesus used in Acts chapter 1 in verse 8 where he told the disciples you know that the Holy Spirit was going to come upon them but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you it's the word where we get the word dynamite amen this is the power of God this is a power that God has made available for every saint of God amen, amen. And so uh, this is this is such power that this power can withstand any attack. Amen. It can successfully oppose any kind of force. This is the dunamis power of God. You shall receive power 
he said. And, and so what I want you to see here, when the Bible says, be strong in the Lord, that it is the Holy Spirit that makes us strong. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, so uh, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You know, so it sounds like, it, you know, be strong, be strong, be strong. Power, power, power. But these words are different words. The word power, as it's used here, is, is the Greek word kratos, K-R-A-T-O-S. And what this is describing is demonstrated power. Amen. Power that is uh, tangible. Power that is visible. Amen. Where people can see the results of this power. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Amen. And so... The power is, is the power that God uses to do great things. Amen. In, in Ephesians chapter 1, we see this word used again in verses 19 and 20. I want you to hear what it says. It says, he says, um, uh, he, he's, this is part of a prayer. Okay, so he says, uh, if I, we go back to verse 16. He says, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints, and what is, he says, I'm praying that you'll know this, okay? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. That's that word, kratos, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand, at his right hand in the heavenly places. Okay, so, so this word kratos is demonstrated power. It's power that is made visible it's power that is is uh, that people can look at and see wow that god did that okay and so so what he's talking about here when he talks about this kratos power of god he said it's the same power that god uh, uh, expressed uh, as he raised jesus from the dead amen, amen. so this is yeah. resurrection power Amen. This is something that is, it doesn't come from us, but it comes from God. It's resurrection power. You know, I, I couldn't help but think of the, uh, the account in Matthew chapter 28 at the resurrection. It says, it says, behold, there was a great earthquake, verse 2 of Matthew 28. For, the, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door, and he sat on it. His countenance was like lightning. And his clothing as white as snow, and the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. Amen. So here's this, this surge uh, of Kratos, power of God uh, that, that came and it paralyzed the guards. They just, oh, can you imagine their eyes or why they can't move? Uh, but they're eyewitnesses of something powerful that took place. A surge of this Kratos power filled the, the tomb of Jesus and came upon every dead cell in his body and brought life back to it. Amen. The divine life of God uh, uh, filled the tomb. It, it drove death out of the tomb. Amen. It, it, uh, it revived these dead cells in Jesus' body and he rose again. He came alive. Amen. And, and his resurrection, in his resurrection, he not only came alive, but he was, he was given immortality. Amen. Live forevermore. Never to die again. And so this Kratos power was demonstrated on that day. It was visible. It was the power of God made visible. These men uh, saw what happened.
they saw the angel come and roll the stone away. They saw Jesus walk out of the tomb. They knew he was dead, but he comes out alive. This is the power that is at work right now in you and I. That's the power that is there to make us new. Hallelujah. You know, in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. See, this is the power that transforms our lives. Amen. That's why, you know, conversion is such a powerful thing. Amen. You know, it, it's not, you know, it, it's not that you just, you got religion. <laughs> or you, you change religions. You know, uh, that, that you, what, you'd like that, this place better than the old place. Or, well, I just decided to start going to church. Uh, for some people, that's true. You know, they just started to go to church. But I'm telling you, what God's desire is for everyone else of us is that all the old things shall pass away and everything becomes new. Amen. Amen. That old oh, life hallelujah. passed away. Right. Amen. I'm not, you know, I'm not the same person that I was. Right. I'm still me, but I'm different. Amen. Hallelujah. That's how come I don't like to call people by their street names. <laughs> you know, you're that, that, per, I, I, you know, I always use David as the example. I say, I say, you're, you're not Bodie anymore. Bodie's dead. David's alive. So, you know, if you had a street name, well, put it to death. Amen. And, and you're a new creation. See, this is the power of God. This is the same power that is going to transform our lowly bodies at the rapture of the church. Hallelujah. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Amen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. Amen. He says this mortal body must put on immortality. This body of corruption is going to become incorruption. Yes. Amen. You're going to be changed. That's the power of God. That is the Kratos power of God. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The Kratos power is that power that is, is so great that it can change anything and it can change anybody. Amen. Amen. This is the gospel. Praise God. So he says the power, the Kratos power, the power of his might. Let's look at the word might for a moment. This, uh, this is a Greek word spelled I-S-C-H-U-O-S. It's chuos, I guess. But might, let's think about that word might for a minute. How many know God is mighty? Amen. You know, in human terms, this word is describing a very, very strong man. Amen. Someone who is very strong, very muscular. I mean, you know, there's some strong men in the world. Amen. I don't know if you've ever seen these bodybuilders and they, you know, they do this and you know, their muscles have muscles. You know, and they, they flex and their, their back goes out and it's just, the, you know, or they do this and they've got, you know, they got uh, a six pack, just loaded with muscles. I have a six pack, but it's kind of hidden. Mine is more like a 12 pack. Anyway, or a keg, whatever. But this is describing somebody who is very muscular, someone who is powerful, someone who can do awesome things. And I want to tell you something there are some strong men in the world, but there's none that can compare to God. Think of the things that God has done. I'll, I'll share one scripture with you in uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse, well, a, a few scriptures, but verse 10 it says, And you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens 
are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. And they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will fold them up, and they will be changed, but you are the same, and your years will not fail. Amen. Amen. He's, the scripture says, by your hand, these things came to be. We know what the scripture says. God, God spoke, and, and he brought everything into being by his spoken word. But in many places it says that he did this by his great hand. Amen. So, you know, think of the things that God has done. Our mighty God. He said, in the power of his might. Okay? Extremely strong. Extremely powerful. Okay? When man had sinned and their sin was so great, God brought a great flood that destroyed the whole, the whole population of the earth at that time. Started a new heaven and a new earth. When his children were slaves in Egypt, by God's mighty right arm, he brought them out. Amen. Through great miracles. Amen. Uh, you know, Moses raised his staff over the Red Sea, and God caused the wind to, to, to blow and part that sea. Think of the things that God has done. Amen. There's so many things. Uh, think about, you know, Jesus. You know, the Bible teaches that Jesus, when he died, he descended into hell. But when the resurrection took place, God invaded hell. He raised Jesus up. And at the same time, he stripped all the power away from the devil and the demons uh, that, that have power on the earth. Amen. Amen. Woo. On the day of Pentecost, he poured out his spirit on his church. Just a small group of people. 120 were in that upper room on this small group of people. And from that moment, uh, that dunamis power of God uh, began to operate in them. And this little group of people turned the world upside down. Amen. 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 So what I'm saying is that God is mighty. And can I tell you something? The world is going to feel and see the might of God again. Amen. He's going to show the world again that he is mighty. Yes. And the point is, is that he said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It sounds kind of repetitive, but it has meaning for every one of us. Amen. And the meaning is, is that the power of his might is available to be at work in us. Amen. That we can overcome. Amen. Amen. We can overcome. Why? Because the power of God is at work in us. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We know the scripture in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Let me go there. I'll read it to you. You'll know it. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Amen. You have overcome. Yes. You have overcome. Amen. Because greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. Yes. Satan is in yeah. is your enemy. Amen. But God is greater. Say that. God is greater. Amen. Sickness is your enemy. But God is greater. Amen. Circumstances can be your enemy. But God is greater. Amen. Addiction grips you. But God is greater. You can put anything you want in there. Anything you're struggling with. Unforgiveness is... Difficult, but God is greater. Amen. Sin is powerful, but God is greater. Is anything greater than God? No. Is there any problem that we face? We sing that song. We don't think about it sometimes. God is greater than my problems. Absolutely, he is. Amen. And so the scripture encourages us and challenges us. And it says, be strong. He said, finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 
He didn't say be strong in yourself. You know, sometimes we, we, we think that what we have to do is, you know, we just have to, you know, we have to work up strength to, to, uh, to overcome the things that we face. We think that we have to somehow be so strong, but really our strength comes from our relationship with our Father. Amen. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in Jesus. Yeah. How? By staying close to God, by keeping your heart right with God, yeah. by obeying God, our strength. Our help comes from the Lord because we look to Him. Yes. That's what prayer does. Prayer puts our problems into the hands of God. Yeah. Amen. Prayer gives us strength that we didn't have. Amen. Prayer encourages us. It lifts us up. That, don't you feel better if, if, you, if you're going through something and you ask someone to pray for you? Yeah. You feel strength. Yeah. You feel renewed strength. You know, just today I was hearing my wife talk to somebody and and saying that I believe that it, it's the prayers of so many people that are helping me to, yeah. to recover so quickly. Man, today the doctor told her, you can do anything you were doing before, just go lift 50 pounds. And I'm like, she couldn't lift 50 pounds before. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, hey, we give glory to God. Can you say amen? amen. How, do, how are you strong in the Lord? You stay close to God. You depend on God. You don't depend on yourself. If we start depending on ourselves, we get in trouble, don't we? Amen. We fall flat on our face. Be strong in the Lord and in the power, the kratos of his might. He's he is mighty. You know, behind us, we you know, we go to make a muscle and mm, it's <laughs> but it's not our might. It's not our strength. Our strength is from God. How many people in the Bible did God make strong? Yes. Amen. They were weak, but God made them strong. Amen. Hallelujah. He'll do the same thing for us. And so, you know, sometimes we're like that elephant. We, you know, a child is descending on us and we're we're just there like, I can't, I can't escape from this. But you have the power to break free. Amen. You have the power to be delivered. You have the power to overcome anything. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Don't think that, that any circumstance is going to destroy you. There may come an attack on your life, on your finances, on your family, and your your mind. Draw near to God, and He'll deliver you. Amen. He defeated Satan. Yes. Amen. He defeated him for us, and He says, "I made this power available to you." Is God? So we're going to pray. Let's bow our heads together. I just want to encourage you. Amen. Take the Word of God to heart. Let it sink down into your soul and believe God. Believe the word of God. The power that he made available is through his son Jesus and through his spirit. Remember what Jesus said? He said, you see the, you see the works that I've done? He said, greater works shall you do. Amen. He said, because... I'm leaving and the Holy Spirit is going to come. He's going to be with you. Amen. You're going to receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That's why it's so important for us as Christians to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why we preach on the Holy Spirit. That's why we pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We need to be full Amen. of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need to have confidence in God's power. In God's might. Amen. Because it's not us. We can't do it by ourselves. God gives us tools. God gives us brethren who stand with us. But we have to have confidence in God. And so tonight as we bring our service to a close. You know, maybe you're going through some things. 
Maybe you're facing some real challenges and, you know, sometimes that can be discouraging. Sometimes it can be disheartening. We can, we can feel like giving up. But I'm going to tell you tonight, do not give up. Be strong in the Lord. Trust God. Pray to God. Put your circumstances into God's hands. Obey God. Stay right with God. Believe God. Believe the word of God. He made all power available to us. Jesus said, if you believe, all things are possible. He said, if you have faith like the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be moved and thrown into the sea, and it shall be done. Because God's might and God's power is so much greater than ours. And he, I believe God looks for people who trust him so he can help them. And so we're going to take some time tonight. We're going to open the altar.